And morning, so this is the start. I'm ready now to go out on the 12 hour walk challenge. It is 27 minutes past six in the morning. A couple of things, um, a couple of things that have already entered my mind that surprised me with this morning actually is um, one, how dark it is. The moon is still out, that surprised me. Let me show you that. Just don't have one door. So, it's kind of surprised me how dark it is there when the full moon is still up, which is uh, which is cool because I, I did look at the sunset, uh, the sort of the full darkness time is supposed to be the, the height of full darkness at this time in the morning, so which is when I want the or the end of full darkness is when I want to leave. So that surprised me. Um, the weight of my bag has surprised me a bit. Um, feels extraordinarily heavy right now um, because of all the drinks and stuff in there. Um, obviously, I'll get lighter during the day would be cool, but it surprised me how heavy that is, um, and it's also surprised me how uh how much life throws resistance up there to actually doing it so things like um falling over at golf on wednesday and then having to go to a &E yesterday last night to see if it's broken or not because it was severely swollen um so that trying to stop me um even when i come back home from that and then was getting ready for bed last night um i actually uh, stubbed my toe and um my, half my nail my big toe come off you know like first of all I oh, can't do it tomorrow you know because my toe you know so there's all these um you know even this morning you know have, have I, have I prepared to enough? have I got enough stuff I've got enough food you know I've got enough plasters have I got enough you know it's there's so much stuff that throws up in you that you've really got to capture it in that moment and and the thing that made me go on Tuesday that yeah I'm doing it Friday or Monday, you know, Monday or Tuesday when I definitely decided right, I'm doing it on Friday. The thing that, that got me to kind of commit fully was a couple of podcasts I did, um, a video that Dave shared with me around a woman in Tibet who's been walking for 20 years in on her own, and and a, yeah, and a, and a couple of podcasts I listened to, Colin O'Brady, particularly the Ed Myatt one, that's a good one to watch, um, and Ed Myatt show, his podcast show, where he interviews Colin O'Brady, and that's a really good one to watch. Um, the... Even at that point when I went, right, yeah, I'm doing it, and then I wrote, I journaled what my, kind of just journaled what my limiting beliefs were, all the things, you know, like, well, my legs hurt too much, we're going to do it, you know, look how many blisters I get, all of these things, um, whatever that, you know, whatever, get it to six hours and then can't do anymore. So all of these limiting beliefs, things that I journaled down and then went through each one and just answered, 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 you know, I'm not near enough body of water, and then when I worked out the route, you know, it turns out Gosfield Lakes, the biggest lake around here, is only is four hours walk, or three hours, just over three hours walk. So, within way easily within the twelve hour walk that I need to do. Um, so, I just answered all the questions that, that that just you know question all them limited beliefs. And if you have any limited beliefs about anything, I mean, that's the thing about just question your limited beliefs. I'm hoping to explore that more on my walk on my own. But um, but yeah, so this is the and I'm not going to fall. So. Again, limiting beliefs come out, things trying to stop you at last minute. So when limiting beliefs didn't try and stop me, then just life throwing up some things here and there trying to stop you to make you easy, see if you easily go, yeah, yeah, okay, I can't do it, I'll, I'll cancel it, I'll do it some other time, you know, I'll do it in the summer when it's a bit more warmer, you know. So, um, yeah, so that's, the, that's my kind of thoughts as I'm just about to now head off. See you in 12 hours. But I'm, I'll see you in a couple of hours. So every couple of hours I'm going to check in and do where my thoughts are and... Um, yeah, and just log it, but it's in them two hours, it's thrown off, it's by myself, no distractions, no headphones, nothing, so, boom, go. Hey, so, two hour check-in, first two hour um, point of the 12 hour walk, so every two hours, going to capture my thoughts, um, really interesting, um, I thought... I thought the first kind of in civilization actually, so I'm doing a, a main sort of kind of road in just coming to Shelford area if you like. So, and a nice uh, bus shelter, not for shelter, to say, whatever, but to have a nice cup of tea and um, and change, change my socks. Um, starting to realize actually that you can't have enough pair of socks actually to do this. I haven't um, got one pair, I'm gonna actually. Uh, I feel like I'm going to be, feel like I should have bought three or four pairs. But anyway, fascinating in the first video about the amount of limiting beliefs and stuff like that, trying to then trying to, and I have to come over that trying to stop you. 
your mind amazing insight is that for doing this walk and i've kind of have pre thought about this which i'm really glad i did is around some deep questions that you're going to find uncomfortable answering um that focuses your thoughts because what i did realize in the first hour is i had i've, I've sectioned up kind of two hours every two hours i uh, take stuff my thoughts but also then pose another question to myself for the next for the next checkpoint so that my thoughts are focused on some challenges and what i realized is on this first two hours is that you know i starting to see some cars now and stuff but the the route to get to here has been very off track um and there's been no one so i've seen that you know it's been beautiful seeing the with the moon start full moon still be on my back and the sun rising in front of me waking up in front of me it's been amazing to see the um to see that that the experience that in pure peacefulness um would just and even the nature is, is silent until the sun comes up it's amazing how slowly nature wakes up you know i thought well i feel the the here with the animals and stuff like that but it's amazing how slowly it wakes up i had so yeah so what's amazing though in that first the battle in that first couple of hours particularly the first hour that the realization had your mind is constantly trying to distract you right so even that way i was really focused had um you know something to do i wanted to really what i wanted to focus on in the first two hours was that i've had real realization with is what what is my purpose what is my biggest behavior that is hindering me achieving that purpose and what is it that is that inspires me that lights me up to fulfill that purpose that's not money it's not money motivated or anything like that it's easy to go down money motivated and being financially free and all that sort of stuff but what's the one thing that 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 when so the one thing for me I, i'll share with this part is the is yesterday um yesterday you had a so wednesday when i had a full playing golf and i hurt my elbow and yesterday it was really swollen and painful. I didn't know if it was broken or dislocated. I could have easily just said, I need, I need, and then when I woke up, I thought, I need, it's still really sore. It's, it's really swelling up. Um, so I need to go to the hospital. Um, and what I did is, I didn't let that, because I thought, if I go to the hospital and I wait today, well, not wait today, but I go to the hospital and, you know, going in the hospital and out of the hospital at the moment is not a quick process. Um, so i i did all my calls everything so you know i did all my calls did my power hour did my marketing 15 minutes um did all of that had lunch with nicole um uh, yeah, didn't have dinner so when i finished my last call at six o'clock well about 25 six um with you so if i um i then you know nicole made me lunch uh, made me dinner to sort of like pack dinner so i thought well you know to save to make use of the time while I'm just waiting around in the hospital um, is, you know, I can have my dinner there while I'm eating dinner first. So Nicole maybe packed up at lunch if you like for dinner. Um, and then went off to hospital. And what was interesting, and the elbow's okay, but it's just severe sweating, just needs rest. Um, it just after I had the full playing golf, playing 14 holes of golf afterwards, apparently aggravated it, which <laughs> who knew, right? Uh, but the, um, so that's good. So, but, the calls I took during the day, I still had the, I didn't want the elbow to distract me. I wanted to be in the moment for them, for the calls, and and be 100% there for them. You know, so the calls I had with, started with Susie, then Ellie, Becky, Yusef, um, and... I know what I'm trying to think, but the, um, the, what was amazing was in the later on is kind of communicating with, with Jess by WhatsApp, um, the, the, the inspirational messages from all of them around what they got from the day, how it inspired them, 
and I realised, and I really realised yesterday, took a moment when I got back in the car, which was, and I was in full peace, which is interesting. So there's something about being in a peaceful environment, less, no distractions, that's amazing. That that's that really inspires me. That lights it up. And at them moments when I was reading the messages and and receiving them, fully receiving them, allowing myself to fully receive them testimonial messages messages of inspiration how to support them it's, it's not a fault about money you know when when you when you're getting there you're just in there's something about it there's some goose bump about it but, don't know if you bump is a word making up words again um but you know, i don't know if there's something about it um that's that's away from everything else that we feel we need to make us happy if that makes sense something completely completely away from off the spectrum from what we believe makes us happy in that moment when we're listening to a message of someone talking about talking about you to someone else about how you've inspired them how you energize them you know so there's something about about that that's that's so bliss um and so down to our true being so yeah so that was so I kind of made it inside already in the first two hours. So I really feel, feel like I feel fully understand what my purpose is. I have identified which was, it only just happened and I kept having to really dig deep um, and almost beat myself up a little bit saying, no, it's got to be honest, be honest, be honest. And being in total peace does allow yourself to be that actually. So I'm glad I've done that in the first part, Johnny, when I'm really off the beaten track, going off the beaten track in full peace definitely definitely more powerful um and i say and the biggest insight i got is probably the worst behavior that i behavior is the word but the worst behavior that i do something that actually um that stops me fulfilling my purpose to the to the maximum um and and I, and, I, and, I, and it's interesting what come up in this first two hours is also a little bit at the end of don't be so hard on yourself scott you've done well you've grown massively over the last few years um you know if, if i was having this comment if i was having this walk two years ago there'd be a lot more you know negative behaviors if you like that were hindering me so you know so there's a bit to be grateful for in that sense um the whole but yeah but what the what i did realize in two hours which is really kind of maybe strong for the next few hours is that that life will try uh, your mind sorry will try to distract you it will try to distract you completely um and when you're in pissed well, like, what was that noise where's that coming from oh, yeah. i can hear a train in the distance oh, the train. it's like things like that you know you and then you capture it and, and the self-awareness is having self-awareness to be able to catch it and i talk about being called um we're with my old coach Louise, which is really powerful me around catch and reset. So catching myself in the moment and then being able to reset. And it's amazing um, sort of kind of insights as well, about seven already um, that I've captured um, as well. Well, I can't but that, that's, that will be for another video, another post, I think. Um, but the, um, yeah, it's amazing catching how many times your mind makes up shit to try and distract you. It really does. And it, and one thing that's really difficult, by the way, these first few hours, I think now, the first couple of hours, and I've done about five and a half miles, uh, just under five and a half miles so far, um, and there was a bit of that I had to really slow down because it was really tricky. I was being tracked with puddles and mud and it, and I had to really kind of um, take the time and uh, navigate that, which gave me a real life lesson as well, by the way, which I'll go into in a different video. But the, um, the um, yeah, just to mention how much your mind distracts you. It's like you're trying to, um, should you be checking your phone? Should you be checking your message? And you know, I've got the phone to take video. I've got obviously the map. The twelve-hour walk has got its own uh, timer, a map in it, which is really good. Which I just suggest you should definitely use that rather than anything else. Um, and it is really difficult that first the first hour or so um, to stay away from your phone, to stay away from looking at your messages. Stuff like that. Particularly when you're using your phone like I am to take video, it's very easy to go. But no, we're not. You know, I've got it on full airplay mode, and um, that's probably the best airplay mode to get no distractions, no notifications, nothing coming through. Um, yeah, so amazing. First, I mean, this is nothing bad. on for 13 minutes here, so that's just the first two hours. Um, 
looking forward now to the next two hours. Within the next two hours, actually, I should be in the uh, should be at the lake at Gosfield Lake, about an hour or so away. Um, have something to look forward to. I have someone you're looking forward to actually. We walking because that's when I went around the lake. And I wanted to go. I wanted to walk where there was a a big body of water, if you like, so to take in. So um, I'm actually quite excited about that. Um, yep. Oh. I honestly thought I'd be giving up um, probably about now, but um, onwards and upwards, or onwards and forwards, <laughs> hopefully not too much upwards, and I'll see you in a couple of hours time. Hey, so this is the, um, but yeah, four hour, well, I've done actually about four, four hours, 25 minutes now actually, um, but I've kind of just found a, a seat to sit on in Gosfield, um, after get, going to Gosfield Lake, and um, again, funny enough, as I go to go video, find someone to sit, it's actually on a busy, just come across a busy road, if you like, and um, but the majority of it's been in country lanes, not beat roads, um, pretty much 90% of it until this point, actually, and so, um, which is, been, it's, it's really blissful, actually, it is, it's, it's a bit hard to, I've been really capturing my thoughts a lot, actually, so which is really good that I'm going over them, but the, um, it's quite hard to, explain to someone like what you know it's almost like i can say people say to me oh what did you get from me and all that and i'll probably do some podcasts and stuff like that and um, my experiences but in terms of giving people what oh you experience this you'll get this you know um i think you can talk from i can talk from my perspective and, and then that'll be really encouraging people just to do it from their own and explore there's some tips around again having some preset uh, stuff to come to contemplate um in this stretch i really wanted to contemplate um what after the first one after really kind of going to a real deep level around understanding my purpose what bad what behavior doesn't help me achieve my purpose and what inspired me to do my purpose what's interesting in this two hours or so has come out is really around what habits i need to um endorse and at what level what, what, what behaviour looks like, my behaviour um, showed up. Um, it was very interesting. I thought I thought this walk would be very, you know, I wanted it to go into that kind of really about what my next level of personal development is. And I thought it would really show up stuff businessy orientated. And it hasn't at all. It's been a bit of everything. But what's interesting, everything that's come up in my thoughts, and I've allowed thoughts just to. What's, what is what I have noticed is your thinking, your brain is switched on so much all the time, and the real willpower through this is actually allowing thoughts to come in, quickly decide if they're a distraction or whether you want to exploit deeper. Then either exploit deeper or allow that thought to to go. A bit like when you meditate, allow thoughts to come in and allow them to go. So that's been really interesting that um, I've surprised myself if you like a little bit how I can control my thoughts in terms of no don't need to think about that I want to go and then someone else comes up straight away and then go deep on that um, but I, you're, I'm conscious that you're just constantly thinking constantly thinking about stuff one of the um, one of the things that has come up enough around 10 um, 10 o'clock 10, 18, something like that, taking over the time when it happened. Um, I really felt the, an urge for a hot meal. <laughs> um, still do, actually. Um, I'm, I'm actually thinking, there's a, I think there's a cafe down here and all that, so I'm gonna try and buy a, a cafe or get a hot meal takeaway so I can still be, so I'm not in, um, interacting with, you know, too long time with people. Um, and, um, but what was interesting was, it felt, it felt like, it was very late in the afternoon. It was almost like I've, I've seen the sun come up. I've seen the, the full moon disperse, the sun coming up, the sun still around. It's got a bit cloudy, and it actually feels like, it, it, you know, even now it's only it's only ten past eleven, and it feels like um, it, it feels like it's really late afternoon. It feels like you know that time when you haven't had lunch and you're getting close to dinner. You think, do I have lunch or do I just wait to dinner? I'm really starving now. It's kind of in that that space and what's interesting is then that come up for me was that 
I had that feeling that it's really late afternoon. I had, an, I had that feeling like I hadn't eaten all day, which is, you know, I've had enough, I've had enough snacks. But the, I haven't, and it's flown by like that, you know, so, but I haven't got up massively, I haven't got up that much earlier than what I normally get up. Um, and, and all I've been doing is walking and thinking. Yeah, it feels like a really productive day. It feels like I haven't done anything, you know, but it feels like a really productive day. It feels like it's really late in the afternoon. I've had a real good, full-on productive day. Um, and, yeah, so that's really, it just shows you, doesn't it, where the time has to... I had a realisation as well about an hour ago where not having nowhere particular to go, you know, I've got a route, but it's not a concrete route. If I come off it, I come off it, and that's fine. Um, and um, having the freedom of time is very freeing in your mind to, to, to if you want to explore stuff deeper you know the real learning for me like if I, if I want to go into do some deep work on something in the future um, I'm going to kind of give myself like 24 hours so you know rather than just kind of block out two hours spot in the day or an afternoon or morning just go you know what I'm going to block out the whole day and finish what I finish because I found that without that perimeter, without that fence of you've got to be back at this time, you've got to do this at that time, um, very, very freeing, very freeing for your thoughts to go deep, very freeing to go deep, to go deep. So another insightful couple of hours and um, I've got a bit of walk, it's going to be with the main road for a little while um, and then I'm going to try and find if I can go off track a little bit and be, go off a beat and track a little bit. Um, but yeah, just just amazing insights I've had, quick thoughts and stuff like that. Um, yeah, super, super interesting. I do want to really do what, it's funny, we kind of have wants, right? It's like, for the moment, I, I was walking, I was thinking, what, oh, what, you know, if I could magically want something right now, what would it be? And the first thing that popped out, and I thought I'm going to capture the what first thing popped in my head. First thing that popped in my head was a, a nice clean pair of thick socks. <laughs> and I've changed my socks over. I've probably socks over. So I've always changed over once, and um, I'm going to change over again soon. But it's like that was my thing. It's like, oh, do you know what? Um, if I could just magic be like a nice, cozy, warm pair of thick socks at the moment. Um, so it's amazing. Isn't it? Different environment, different place, different thoughts. Is uh, the Ferraris, the Lamborghinis, the, the big houses, the money, all of that goes out the window with a, a nice pair of big socks. That's what I truly want. Um, that's moved on there. Now that I've changed my socks, that has actually moved on to a nice hot meal now, actually. Um, got a real burning urge, actually, for sausage and chips for some reason. So I'll be going to try and find something I'll get sausage and chips. Might see you in a couple of minutes. Alright, so, um, time now. Time's actually 20, 20 past one. So about two and a half hours actually this time on this thing um, as you can see I'm on my cover one of the this last two and a half hours particularly the last half hour 45 minutes um, it's been the toughest by far um, yeah real fatigue pains in your feet sort of kind of thing you know feel strains in your legs um, the temperature dropped a little bit as well the Sunday the clouds have got a bit cloudy it hasn't rained it's got a bit cloudy the temperature really dropped really quickly um, so that was interesting, picked up a bit now with the sun. Um, definitely again, more, because it's more difficult, I found that distractions, my mind, I got easily more distracted. Let my let my mind sort of kind of, have to keep catching it and kind of, oh actually, I really noticed. I mean the major thing is, is the self, self-awareness is quite high, because I, I went to quite deep thought about that because I realised that I was letting, Distractions, like my mind distract me, get a better me. Um, I think I had a 20 minute conversation myself around why why farts are louder in the open and not in the and then in the house when you're out in the, in, in the world. Um, so, so, that's, so that's how I easily get distracted. And I think it's that's fatigue, so it just shows you around, really made me think about health and fitness a little bit more actually. Because the more you got that fatigue, that, that last bit, I mean, I'm over halfway now, which is pretty cool. I've done 10 minutes away from seven hours. Um, done something like about, um, I don't know how many miles I've done actually, about 18 miles, something like that. But, um, but the, um, 
but yeah, but the, because the fatigue sets in, your, your, the distractions that come in, so it just shows you that on a day-to-day -day basis, that if you're, if I went to deep water, if you're letting, if you're, if you're tired and you're trying to, you're, you're going to get distracted, you're going to get the distractions to get the better of you, and you stay focused and be in your top self, which is, um, which is interesting. As you can see, I found a pub, and this is my big long break of the day that I, I haven't had too many breaks, but this is my big long break of the day, and guess what I found? Yeah, I found sausage and chips, and a cup of tea. Not Nicole's cup of tea, my magical things there, and also I found um, walk past place, actually sold socks as well, so I bought some extra pairs of socks now as well, so... Um, um, yeah, so, onwards and outwards. Really interesting session to say, because it's made me realise actually that so one thing I took note of actually that every single day so I've been what six hours so after five hours really felt the fatigue five and a half hours felt the fatigue so it just shows you that on a daily basis that you've got to have some sort of mechanism that allows you to fully recover during the day this is my mechanism my big long break a sausage and chips um, and and just sit down and recover before I do the last leg. So it just shows you that even on a day-to-day -day basis, and I've got to think about that now, when you deep thought about that, but actually habits, the one the thing I thought about was like, was starting about what habits I've got to start doing. And um, that was definitely one around, like, I, not, you know, like health and fitness that don't talk about, is, is having some sort of daily recovery mechanism. It's okay, so you know, it's okay to go and have an hour's sleep in the middle of the day. You know, so, um, I had a lot of deep thought around my sleep pattern as well actually because I've always struggled with sleep patterns but what I realised actually what I went deep thought with which I've never had this thought so this just shows you how you go into real clarity when you have this time with yourself is I've been trying to conform to how people say your sleep should be but in reality we're all very different some of us can have four hours sleep and work for the day and be great and have a lot of energy others are night people like you know more can stay up late and get up early and it doesn't affect them other people stay up late affects them badly the next day um, other people like getting up really early and um, you know and, and, and can get up and out of bed and you know and get going straight away so what it made me realize when I was going to sleep is that um, that that yeah that my sleep pain is not to conform to what trying to conform to something else and happening and all that and I've kind of figured out kind of a pattern in myself in this thing around how I can have them days or so you know one of the things is like when I'm when I wake up at after about half three and I'm quite awake um, I then fight to try and get back to sleep or whatever so I realize now that actually it's okay I'll just get up and just get into my day gently and then and then I'll probably will fatigue around probably nine o'clock seven ten o'clock and then have a have a full recovery session, you know, whether that's a sleep, whether that's just a relax, whether that's a nice nice bit of food or whatever, and fully recover and then go again at 11 o'clock when my calls start and stuff. So, because um, I'm pretty good, but I don't take calls before 11 o'clock, so, you know, um, I can build that in. And so it's a big thing about me about don't fight it, just go with it. When I'm tired, I'm tired. Building some recovery during the day and when I'm awake, I'm awake and just do things. There's always something to do, isn't there, in the business, you know? And what it has shown me today, getting a really early start is, even really early on, there was like cars about and stuff like that, you know, people waking up at different times and stuff like that as they went past sort of kind of country houses and stuff. Um, and the world is 24 hours now. So you don't have to conform to what we're supposed to conform to. Go to bed at 10, get up at six, you know, do this, do that. Obviously we've got kids and stuff like that, there's things around there, but again, you know, that's it's manageable around that. It's manageable. But that's it, so I'm gonna have my sausage and chips and my cup of tea and have my long recovery and then get going again and then probably be two and a half hours before I speak again actually after have this uh, half an hour break. So to the next part. Hey, so probably the last check-in before I do the final one when I get home. Um, Got to say, it's getting like a challenge now. Um, done about 20, 22 miles, um, two hours to go. Feels now like 
willpower, if you like, determination to to get it done. <laughs> um, plus, I'm about two hours away from home, so it's um, the way I've done my route. It's not like I'm can uh, can take a shortcut at the moment anyway um, and get there any quicker. So, um, but the my last little stop that I had five minutes when I got up, um, my thighs really starting to seize up. Um, you know, I do a fair bit of walking on the golf course and stuff like that, but nothing to nothing to this level. So, um, and what's quite obvious is that your as you fatigue, your quality of deep work, deep thought, reduces drastically. So. It's great in kind of terms of want to do the challenge, you know, dark, it looks lighter on here, but it's starting to get dark now and cold. Um, the thing I'm looking forward to now, actually, on this last couple of hours, actually, is the, is the full moon tonight. And um, and where I am in North Essex is quite high, so the moon is, when it's, the moon generally very prominent, very bright, um, very low in the sky for where we are. So. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to that as as darkness is now starting to the sun has gone down and the darkness is starting to form. Um be interesting if that creates another another kind of level of deep awareness if you like or you know it gets the the deep faults uh, going again. But I must say the last kind of um it's interesting on this leg so since I stopped and had my big recovery sausage and chips um, change my socks um, wearing two socks much more comfortable pro tip much more comfortable wear two socks um, caught my blisters just in time so put plasters on those the blister plasters I've caught them just in time which is really cool so my feet are comfortable which is you know one of my limited beliefs about my feet would be blistered up and stuff like that so um, just my thighs are really feel so heavy lifting my feet um, at the moment. Um, the thighs, uh, I had a little stretch just to, so we can see it from sort of working. This is Flitchway in rain, and um, now but I had a little stretch where it had to go up and over the bridge. Um, well, that uphill bit, well, the uphill bit was pretty, felt like I was climbing a mountain. I kept standing myself halfway, well, at least I got the downhill bit on the next bit. Actually, downhill um, was just as bad because you're picking up speed and it's like, oh. So my pace has dropped off quite a bit. What I will say is on this leg, after recharged, I felt the first time on the actual, the whole 12 hours where I felt a real peace. So first time where I was kind of aware that I didn't have many thoughts. Um, just kind of in the moment, taking in my my environment, my world, um, seemed to be much more aware of my surroundings. It felt um, and just very much at peace at that point. And that was about about an hour and a half before the pain kicked in. <laughs> um, and so that was that was really blissful. That was really um, unexpected from what had happened previously so um but it was a just felt very blissful felt very very calm very peaceful very few thoughts going through my head very few distractions um just very aware of what was around me and felt very connected to my surroundings so that was a really interesting thought and what we would say i suppose is we are was doing it again which I will do. I was debating. I was kind of contemplating this, going deep work about it. It's like, how often would I do this? Would I do it once a month? Would I do it once a quarter? Once a year? When would I do it? You know. And I can see potentially at the start of every quarter. Um, I think no. I mean, it might change when I get home, depending on the last this last leg. But I think next time I'll probably actually do for about possibly about eight and a half hours. So that have that six hours first of all. Have the recovery and have that hour and a half of bliss um yeah right. hey hey it's all right it's all right attacked by dogs <laughs> i just want to say hello um 
it's funny as a dog owner, isn't it? Where if your dog approaches someone, you don't know if they're a dog lover or a dog owner or whatever. So your first thought is, oh, they might not like dogs or something. And uh, the dogs just want to say hello. Um, yeah, so my, I think, you know, it's dependent on yourself. But I think if you, if you don't walk much, six hours could be enough to do it in. Um, so the only reason I would do eight and a half potentially next time is still building, having that that half hour of sitting down and eating something and recovering um, that hour and a half afterwards was just unexpected um, a very enjoyable experience so um, yeah so maybe eight and a half hours might be the, the pattern next time I don't know um, definitely got the willpower and determination to complete this 12 hours so that I can tell guys they might have done that and hopefully inspire people um, and yeah so, so it's getting dark quite quickly now and um, getting cold actually as well so um, I think it'll be woolly hat back on, back on in a minute and gloves back on and then see what happens when the moon comes up I've got one more question that I want to contemplate um, the one I contemplated on this one is around what what my personal development looks like over the next 90 days um, so that's quite interesting Some things that come up to me around morning routine um, habits and productivity and I feel like I haven't completed that in this in this walk because of the pain kicked in so that's kind of what I want to delve into in my mind in a bit deeper um, on this last leg but also um, open to an unexpected outcome of what the full moon brings hopefully no werewolves um, so uh, but yeah I'll see you in a couple of hours at the, at the uh, back home hey so this is the final installment of the uh, 12 hour walk vlog um, last two hours so I didn't do the final installment at the end of the the walk um, many because I just just in so much got to when I sat down and then couldn't walk um when I got up to go to the toilet I was like really dizzy started sweating um so doing this this video we well, have recovered somewhat a day or so afterwards um with my little man here and um yeah so needed that sleep really I mean I was in touch just to go to the toilet and then couldn't get can walk um and it's on the uh lie down on the kitchen floor <laughs> pretty much and stay down there for about 25 minutes could have easily spent the night on the kitchen floor but so comfy and then crawled upstairs got to bed and she slept quite a bit through and then hot bath in the morning um which i thought i'd just get straight to the hot bath when i got home but the just the last two hours as particularly the last i would say 90 minutes were were just brutal and to be honest if it's it been completely lies now having a little bit of time to reflect on it um that if I would because I thought about in the last day would I do it again and would I do it like maybe you know I probably would do it again but maybe now that I've done the 12 hours and sort of kind of achieved that um which was way beyond what I thought I could do yeah, it turned out to be just I think 26.97 miles if you said I could you know I was going to walk 27 miles oh you know even even if you said you know I had to walk 15 miles I would go well I don't know if I could do that so in terms of getting through limited beliefs is amazing i'd say it wasn't like, the last hour and a half particularly i didn't i wasn't getting insights i wasn't getting deep thought i tried to keep going into pondering deep thoughts and, and whether or not that was because of lack of preparation i mean because i literally went from hearing about it on a sunday i think it was last sunday um to make watching some podcasts watching some videos watching some colin O'Brien stuff and uh who's the guy who come up with a 12-hour walk and all of the book um, so I went straight from Tuesday, right, come in, I'm going to do it Friday, um, back off Wednesday, hurt my elbow on Wednesday, <laughs> rolled it over, um, so that was final, and then still went, right, and I'm just doing it, going out, you know, half past six on a Friday morning. So I'd probably do a bit more prep next time, maybe, build up, um, do a series of, you know, two hour, three hour, you know, a bit more walks that way. But, um, but the last hour and a half just felt like survival, and I didn't really get any thoughts on it, it was just trying to get get it completed and that was my willpower actually was 
could be an inspiration to, you know, if you want to be bail out, you know, I wanted to inspire, you know, some kids and stuff like that. Say, so, yeah, I've done the 12 hours and I've done it. And and I've done the, I didn't know what mileage, there was no set mileage on it. Here, come sit down. Come sit down. Um, little Leah, you know. So it wasn't about set mileage. So that was kind of looked at that afterwards, um, which was, um, yeah, really surprised me how far it was. I was quite pleased when I got to the 20 hour mark, if you like, uh, 20 miles mark, I looked at that, but after that I didn't really look, so I thought I'd only done a couple of miles more. But the speed was slowing down a lot near the end, the last 90 minutes of my portfolio, so it was um, it was really brutal the last couple of hours, and I was in a bit of pain, uh, been, been in a bit of pain with my legs, and still in a bit of pain with my legs now. Um, the blisters weren't too bad actually, because I got the new, you know, the fresh pair of socks, and then wore two pairs of socks for the final, and then, um was was pretty cool um and and yeah so overall and absolutely everything you know so deep full so insightful a final fortnight i had um was that you know the pain will last a couple of days but the insights um will last a lifetime you know the lessons and the, the insights will last a lifetime so that was my final kind of it's you like is a thought that was really jumping out that really um really super glad that I did it. Would I do it again? Yes, but possibly not for twelve hours. I might do it for eight and a half because I feel like after no nine and a half, ten and a half, ten hours possibly. After that, yeah, after ten and a half hours, really kind of just was just getting through pain. You know, just getting just get to the end of survival, and um, it wasn't about that for me. It was about getting the deep insights, the self development, looking deep inside myself, and all of that stuff. I got a plenty of. And and the bit around, I think that's the last one around the hour and a half of just bliss, just real peace, no thoughts and all that. That was quite amazing. So I would I wouldn't want to skip that part next time. Um, so yeah, overall fantastic. Um, and yeah, and I don't know what to do with it really from here. I got took loads of insights from it, and whether I'll definitely be sharing it with um with uh, the people in the building scout program and the successful coach society and um, maybe that's podcast so if anyone wants to interview me and go deep into what my insights were more insights that i took notes of um i think that'd be pretty cool i might ask a couple of people to actually or one person to to actually interview me they can delve a bit explore a bit deeper with me about it that'd be pretty cool coming from um Coming from a place of not knowing what the questions are. So if someone was interviewing me and exploring it and they'd be interested to what questions they ask and you know what responses I give, I think that would be a good experience from it. But um but a fantastic experience. Um might also when I was trying to think about about tips about if I was doing it differently, what I would I do differently? I had more more pairs of socks. Um definitely plan the route a little bit better around the recovery stage, because that's one thing that came out around the recovery is probably was about an hour too far before that and and that was interesting right because you kind of i judged that to around when i normally eat lunch you know and and actually it's completely different on your environment and what you've been doing beforehand of when you you know so you don't have to eat lunch at one o'clock you can eat lunch at 10 in the morning if you want um depending on what you've been doing up to that day so um yes yeah, so i'll probably plan that a bit better um but f fascinating worthy glad to be home with I had the little one and and the heavy one and the rest of them um and to have one of the girls cups of tea that was amazing in itself um and a worthy worthy experience i'm really glad i did it i'm really glad i finished in 12 hours um really battled through some limiting the beliefs of what i thought i could do and um, one interesting actually just final thing was one of my beliefs if you like that i wrote, wrote down beforehand my limited beliefs and you know, like when I'm gonna, when I'm gonna do it, time, blah blah blah, and all that sort of stuff. One of the things was, are my legs gonna hurt a lot afterwards? And the answer is yes, they did. Um, yes, they do, <laughs> um, still. But the it doesn't matter that that did come true. The fact that I had that as a um, a resistance to doing it, yeah, still did it. And even though it come true afterwards, I'm glad I still done it. So that just shows you kind of. That was a real powerful resistance that will almost stop me doing it because I was thinking about it, then I won't be able to play golf a little bit and stuff like that. So that was a real big resistance. Um, this one little dropping little smelly fire bombs while we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, 
but that was um yeah so that was a big real resistance that almost stopped me doing it and it actually it's true my legs are hurting very much at the end i couldn't walk which was not good dizzy sweaty hot things you know and anything and then but then as i said you know that the pain lasts for a couple of days the, the lessons learned for a lifetime so even though the fact that i thought a resistance come up that almost stopped me doing it i still did it even though that did come mm -hmm. true and my how i'm dealing with it is is my mindset's completely different than what i would have done before so that just shows you how powerful getting through and battling through resistance is um yeah how important it is so that's it that's it done over and out um I'm not gonna do it again for a little while, but I probably will do it again. But maybe do a ten-hour one. Um, so, because the last ninety minutes just didn't serve me. It was just it was just survival and fighting to get to the end. But I'm glad I did it.